Hello guys and welcome back to Project Monaco with me, Pug Gaming. And thank you again for joining me on this episode 8 now. We're, we're slowly getting a long way into the project and there's still a long, long way to go. Episode 7, we worked on the, well, the last part of the harbour in fact, and placing down the beautiful Monaco Yacht Club by Senfcon. And the final peers by Mick Crosshill, who has worked absolutely amazingly on helping me achieve this whole harbour area. And today, it's all about detailing, really. We're going to bring in a few buildings. Yes, a few buildings are going to be entered into this area. And we're going to try and shape up this area because I want this harbour finished. As much as I've loved, enjoyed doing this, we need to move on. We need to start bringing people into this area. We need to start making new things. There's some amazing props and assets that I need to still place down. And without rushing, I want to show you them off because some of these are phenomenal. But also this episode is going to be a little bit different. We're going to have a little bit of live play today because there's a section just off of this beautiful Monaco Yacht Club building that I want to do myself and I want to show you how I do it. A bit of custom work. It involves a beautiful swimming pool and well a lot of plodble asphalt as well to um, really make it take shape but that's going to be a bit later on the episode and for now let's check what we need to do so let's head over to google maps and we can see here that there is a bit of construction work that needs to be done there is this junction here so you can see the house in the background which we'll get around to placing but also there's this car park here along the side which we need to put down um, and it was this area that was looking a little bit shaky in terms of not much going on so we need to work on that and there's this bit of the harbour here that actually pops out as well um, so we need to work on that and Google Maps now does have 3D rendering of Monaco but unfortunately it doesn't really show what we want to work with so we are still using some of the Google um, images etc because some of the Google Maps isn't actually up to date to where I designed the rest of the harbour. Um, so we need to make sure we are working from the same time zone. And also the parts that I'm working on at the moment look a lot more nicer. But as you can see here, this is the um, little arch area we was working on. So that will be in the background with some buildings in front of it. And it's going to be difficult really to, to fit all these buildings in here. So it's going to be an interesting um, interesting time to, to get them all shoved in but here's the area I was talking about we're gonna add on this section here so you can see where the harbour finishes we're gonna then create this swim pool area and also the pathway across the side and some more custom stairs yes we all love custom stairs and yeah that's pretty much what we've got to work with for today's episode so let's get on with it let's get some building done and let's detail this beautiful section of the harbour and to kick things off we're going to carry on the tree area here as well so as again using google maps trying to work out the exact sort of pattern of this area um, and i have noticed there's some interesting um, zebra crosses as well they have this red lined pathway um, highlighted with some white paint across there and i really do like that it looks really nice and it does kind of remind me i think of japan and uh, china have these sort of uh, zebra crossings and there's just a few <laughs> random ones scattered around monaco which is interesting um but anyway there's a lot of planters along this section here along with the trees um so just using some of the planters from the workshop and hiding up some of the ugliness we are able to create this tree line across and this tree line is so important to the build it's something that really would make a difference if you took it away um, in terms of the, the sort of skyline itself if you took away these trees it wouldn't quite look as it does in real life and we really want to keep that replication going so just planted a few of these down and a bit of detail as well again you'll see a bit later on how realistic that looks and again the mopeds yes there are lots and lots and lots of mopeds in monaco which makes sense cheap to run and not only that but you can't really park a car too easily in monaco um so we've done a lot of parking areas for mopeds as well um need to find a few more actual driving mopeds as well which um, will be interesting 
placing down a bus shelter there as well. And we've had some custom buses done, which you might have seen pop up on the workshop recently. They'll be placed in this own special episode when we start working on some traffic um, areas as well. But for the meantime, we're carrying on the train with these um, planters, which I've not overdone it, um, but I've certainly done more than what there actually is in Monaco. And uh, I don't mind that because they do look nice and it does bring the whole area together um, and makes it look more realistic. This section here is going to be where we create the car park and it's going to be a non-functional car park unfortunately, mostly because the whole area here is proper asphalt. So technically there's no foundations to actually have anything there. We could place a road across that but for the sake of the design of the game and how it all plays, we're just gonna do it as it is and make it a, um, a non-functional car park, which I don't mind, to be honest. There's gonna be a lot of functional areas in itself around this whole build. Um, so yeah, kind of pointless, no point doing that. We'll leave it as it is. And there you go, as you can see, we placed down the prop cars. And to be honest, it still looks realistic in my eyes. I know there's not going to be any cars moving about, but sometimes it's rather annoying, especially how the um, AI of the cars works. We also created that little section there where we'll work on a bit later on, and I've plopped down quite a lot of the yachts as well. Um, just to add to the realism, because there is a lot of the yachts around this section. But now we're going to work on one of the two piers that Mick Crossell done. Um, and pretty much what we're going to do is just imitate what we see on Google Maps. So just bring it to life, add a bit of plants around there. Um, it is actually an area where cars park. So as you can imagine, these two piers in particular, just like the rest, um, people come, park their cars, get in their yacht um, or do maintenance, etc. So that's why there is cars parked on this section. Um, I know it's not realistic on this pier in particular because there's a big ramp up to get back onto mainland but it is what it is um, and it doesn't look too shabby to be honest we can get away with that next up we're going to work on this area here and this is actually one of the main bus depot areas um, the main area where it seems that the buses end up in the harbour area, uh, quite a focal point. So we're gonna try and create this and um, we're gonna try and make this a actual proper bus area as well. So that's the plan just here. Um, but again, we need to have a lot more in terms of people um, to make this realistic and actually functional. Um, at the moment there is very minimal people, <laughs> as you can see on the bottom panel, but it will certainly change in the short term so just creating this bus area here which um, does turn out quite nicely and this area beyond the bus area is a little section where there's sometimes a marketplace um, there's a few of these uh, Monaco buildings um, which we had custom made again this one was created by Kozak so they are beautiful um, again we'll get those in the workshop as soon as possible but these are little buildings that mostly are for the monaco pier so it's just a little it's almost like a porter cabin but a little bit more attractive so we've plopped a few of those down here and also we've taken one of the shops as well which again on all the workshop just yet we'll release that a bit later on when we work on the section where they were actually produced for um but we create a little shop area here as well just to add to the area a little cafe sort of off the side and put some trees down etc and just make things look a bit more lifelike so we can have some people walking across here eventually as well.
Now I want to jump in here, I know this is a, a, <laughs> a mundane section of me placing down lines, but again I wanted to show you off the technique of creating the uh, decals brightness. Um, so what I mean by this is when you place down decals, depending on what surface you're placing onto, in particular here I'm going down onto the proper asphalt. But what if you're adding it onto, if you press page up, page down combination um, to higher and lower actual decals, you can really make it embed into the surface that you're putting it down to. And the bonuses of that is it looks more worn. Uh, for example, these yellow lines were far, far too bright for this section here that I really wanted to dim that down and make it almost like it's not there. I want to make it look like it's a used section. And as you can see here, it looks really realistic just by minimizing the, uh, the amount of light that comes through here. Um, and we'll do the same again very shortly with the um, zebra crossing. And especially if we're using the worn zebra crossing, when you also lower this down as well, my word, it does look like it's just a, a used section. and. Uh, it does really come to life and you'll see it here. So we're using these used um, crossing zones and just dimming them down. I think that's sort of three or four shades down. It looks so much better. Um, it looks more realistic. Bright lines aren't often seen. I know obviously if it's just been painted, it's gonna be exactly like that. But I really do love the fact of bringing these down. And also I did find another technique which we'll come to very shortly. Um, with regards to dimming down sections there is a few decals in the workshop that I don't know if they use very often um, and one of them in particular is this white sort of patch it almost looks like snow um, and a lot of you are probably thinking why would you use something like that it's not going to look very nice but um, you'll see very shortly in the video um, I do place this down it's a nice square shape as well and doing so it just makes it look like these sections of the road have um, been dug up and sort of replaced. And here they are here, um, just plopping them down here, sort of all over the place. It just looks like this area has been repaired and I really do like that look. It looks really nice. But anyway, on to what I promised you earlier, guys. We are on to a live video now of me creating this swimming pool section. It is it was a bit of a mission I must admit um, but with the use of procedural objects we were able to use Ronix's um, swimming pools here and higher and lower it without the ground conforming which is one of the bonuses here of using procedural objects you don't get the terraform issues you don't get the, the issues with the terrain following up the area which obviously in this section here would really mess up the whole of this area so that is one bonus of using the um, procedural objects. So, so make sure you keep that in mind next time you're working on this area. So as you can see, the pool is now placed and we are now just building up this section. So this section here itself is higher up than um, obviously the ground floor of the harbour itself. So what my issue was is we had a big section underneath that needs to be filled and uh, there's no real copy imitations of what Semphicon used here. So it's more of a case of us finding something that we could put in this area. And I wanted it to stay as glass. Um, but I do come back that, to that a bit later on. We're just also placing on the wooden floors. And remember, you can always higher and lower the decals to make sure that they go up a, a level. Um, as you can see from here, I'm placing these on the purple asphalt that's higher up. Um, than the ground floor itself so it, it may look like you can't place it down but you still can you just need to keep tapping up um, on the page up button and eventually it will come across that section and I do skip a few frames here because it did take a lot of time to put together but we do end up using these glass panels along with some of the Monaco walls um, to imitate this section and make it look like it's still part of Semphicon's um, build. And I don't think it looks too bad to be honest. Um, it would have been better if we could have copied the exact um, area that Semphicon used but obviously that's what he's designed himself and I do like using the old imagination to create sections like this so that really did work out quite nicely and we just redo it again here because we wanted to um, make things a little bit more the shapes a little bit better to be honest so 
Um, I did start, start scratch here, which is why the um, building suddenly disappeared. But as you can see here, creating a template on the sides and then copy and pasting it just makes life easier. Um, and yeah, this, this section really does come to life a bit later on as well. So make sure you keep watching because it really does work well. And what we need to do here is create the staircase. So custom staircases once again, um, and obviously using Move It to rise the areas up means that we can be a lot more flexible in terms of how we place stairs. And obviously these stairs here um, do not conform to the floor and bring up the land itself. It's a prop, so that makes life a lot easier when you're doing a custom staircase just like this. And there's been a lot of people asking about these custom staircases and how you come about doing them. Um, so again, as I said earlier, I think I said in the last episode, I, I will put together a sort of tutorial um, on the best way that I myself achieve custom staircases. There's obviously a lot of ways to do them nowadays, and I'll show you a few techniques that I've learned along the way. So that will be coming um, at some point as well. Again, using the um, Monaco walls by Los Gecko. Actually, sorry though, these aren't the Monaco walls, these are his standard um, walls. Um, which we plopped down and they, they work quite nicely actually. The Monaco walls wouldn't have quite worked so well here. And always, again, using the Move It Mod tool to copy and paste sections means that you can identically have um, parallel parts as well, which uh, obviously makes things look more realistic. And I do actually really enjoy doing these custom staircases. They're actually quite enjoyable to do. And also it's that feel of satisfaction once it's done and obviously the fact that there are so many more different types of um, staircases, the probable asphalt for example as well, and also these uh, more durable and easily modified walls just add to the realism and obviously make your life a lot easier when you're placing down staircases. And I know this is not exactly the same sort of staircase as is in Monaco, um, but it still works in my opinion. Now we're going to take a quick time lapse break here. I'm going to leave you with me plopping down the Monaco walls by Los Gecko, which are on the workshop already. And we'll catch up near the end of the episode. Catch you in a bit. So that's pretty much the completion of the Monaco walls and we're gonna work on number two of the custom staircases. Now this is a slightly different staircase because the majority of it is already built and on the workshop. I'll drop a link in the description below to this exact um, staircase. And what we're doing is we're just trying to imitate the staircase itself and there's a few, obviously a few issues we've got here because we need to try and work around um, the barrier that's being placed down as standard on the uh, road itself. So what we're doing is just using some proper asphalt. We're using some of the Monaco walls again um, just to add um, a different height terrain here to get over that wall um, and just make things tie in rather nicely. And this is what I do love about the game as well is the variants you can create um, with different assets like the Monaco walls when I asked for those to be created with by um, Mac Welshman. I didn't expect to be using them in this fashion but it's like when you've got a toolbox of accessories of what you can and can't use 
the parts you use, you just have these ideas, you remember different assets, you remember different props, and you think to yourself, well, that can do a job there. And uh, it's those sort of things that really do make the game so imaginative. And that's why we have so many amazing creators, not just on YouTube, but you guys at home who are also just working on stuff. That's why every build is so different from everyone else's. Um, and that's why we get these incredible screenshots of different people's work. But anyway, guys, that is the end of episode eight. Yes, we're close to double figures now. I'm going to leave you with these cinematics. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. If you want to see more and keep up to date, hit that sub button. Remember to check out my social media platforms as well. Jump into Patreon if you want to have some bonuses of Project Monaco. But other than that, I'm going to leave you with these final cinematics. A bit longer cinematics this week because we have pretty much now completed the harbour. Next week, we're going to bring it to life. I'll catch you all then, I hope, guys. And I'll speak to you all very, very soon. Thanks for watching and all the best. Thank you.